Hello and welcome back to the When You're Podcast, the podcast for when you're doing anything. Today we're talking about when you're watching Ocean's Eleven. So, you know, everybody likes a good heist movie here and there. And this, uh, I'm talking about the, um, I'm talking about the George Clooney one. I'm not talking about the, the, the older one with Frank Sinatra. Even though that one is is fantastic as well, and and it has Frank Sinatra in it. You know, so big, 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 big deal. But this one, I want to focus on this one because I feel like they do this one better, and uh, it's a lot more modern, I guess. You know, the older one, you can obviously tell the the difference in, in cinema. But anyways, Ocean's Eleven, I just feel like this movie, not that it feels like we're missing a chunk, it just feels like we get into it, and then once we're in it, we're in it. You know what I mean? It doesn't feel like there's any. This obviously isn't like a origin story. It feels like there's already been years of progression of like connection and things that made between characters that we never really see off screen or that that they kind of don't have to tell us, right? We already know that George Clooney and Brad Pitt in the in the movie are already they know each other. They're friends. They, they go way back, you know, they work together, stuff like that, right? Like, they're old friends. They don't have to, they don't have to give you the story of how they first met or they don't have to do any of that, that stuff. It, it, it doesn't feel like there has to be that kind of a thing, right? And besides, they, they do have a, an all-star cast, you know, they have a whole list of people that we are introduced to and that they meet for the first time or that they have a knowing of, but they kind of don't know everything about them or how they operate how they work but they assemble this team and whatnot so i want to let, let's start with george clooney so he's phenomenal in this movie he's very charismatic and charming and smart and he just like he gets it you know what i mean he's a he's a good protagonist he's somebody who you kind of root for you know to win somebody who you want to you know, even though what he's doing is quote unquote wrong, right? It's wrong to steal all of that money from a casino, but it's a casino. So what is it what does it really matter? What's the big deal? But the fact that it's George Clooney doing it is what seals it, you know, and by seeing his every move, his every step and understanding who he is and what he does. If they did a movie from uh, Terry Benedict's perspective, the guy who owns the, the casinos, right? I think we'd have a lot... I mean, he, he can be a little stern and cold and not as funny or he doesn't... You know, but we, we can understand his intellect and what he's about, you know, up up in his head. Um, I've never really shown him to be all that much more caring but long story short George Clooney does fantastic in this movie and he he, he plays uh, Danny Ocean in the movie man it took me forever to remember his name but Danny Ocean then there's Brad Pitt who's also just as fantastic Rusty man and Rusty is like the perfect I mean they he carries so much of like responsibility throughout the movie that kind of George Clooney I mean they they're they're co-owners right like they're both they're both running the operation but it feels like Rusty is a lot more hands-on or like if any of them have a problem they said in the movies like what do you do if you have a problem they go like we go to Rusty like all of them go to Rusty and then Rusty goes to Danny and then Danny and them try to figure out the plan or the next step the next way to work and I feel like, and and also how he eats throughout the movie, you know, it's a big thing that he eats in all of his movie, but in that movie in particular, is like, he's constantly working, he's constantly on the movie, he doesn't have a time to sit down and enjoy a meal, so he has to like, eat chips, shrimp, burgers, like anything that's edible on the go and on hand, you know. I feel like a burrito would have been great, but you know, whatever, he can do what he wants, he can do as he pleases. So anyways, Brad Pitt is fantastic in this movie, and he plays a lot of different roles. He plays the guy who calls Terry Benedict, he plays the doctor, he plays 
uh, the the leader of the SWAT team, right? Like he does so many different roles, and he's so on point. He gets the sw- he drives the SWAT truck. Like he knows every little thing that's gonna happen, every little thing that's gonna turn around. So he's very key in it. And not that George Clooney isn't. He is, but it's like everybody has a role to play, and his role is to like be a lot more anonymous. Like George. George Clooney to uh, Danny Ocean to Terry Benedict, like there's there's something there. Not to mention Julia Roberts is in this movie. I mean, come on, all star cast here. Don't even give me. I mean, you got Matt Damon, Bernie Mac, Don Cheadle. You got so many so many great uh, actors in this movie that they really help deliver the performances. They really help deliver. The whole thing and it feels like everything like everything that happened in that movie all of the characters and everything that went on the plan the heist the getting tests back like it all just it felt it felt good for it all to come together so anyways julia roberts is in this movie she's fantastic it's a little She's a little less, um, she's not as involved or she's not as like, she's not involved at all in the heist, but it's more so of like, of a romance or of like a love interest for Danny Ocean's character, which, which is fine. I think she, she nailed it perfectly. And I think that the banter that she has with George Clooney is the back and forth between the two of them is absolutely phenomenal. And then Matt Damon does well here as well, uh, too. And he's kind of like the youngest one of the crew, I guess. He He's the newest. I mean, I don't know who's the youngest or who's the oldest, but like he's the newest or the youngest recruit of all of them. And he's kind of like trying to learn and figure out as he goes. And he's picking up a lot of tips and it just all kind of balances each other out, you know. Bernie Mac is hilarious. Don Cheadle with his accent. I mean... Call it what you want, you know. He he sold it for me. You know, I think about the first time I watched it, I didn't I didn't bat an eye about it. I wasn't like, oh, he's obviously doing an accent, you know. But I was a kid, so I didn't know any better. But it is what it is. And even now, you know, I just like that's just the character, you know. And I, I don't I don't think like, oh, he's a bad actor. He's not doing the accent right. For me, it's just like, well, it's what he wanted to do, and he did it, and it works. It it works for some reason. Um, but anyways, so back to what I was saying about like how they don't explain everything to you or they don't, they don't give you like a complete historical breakdown or there's no like, they don't start at the beginning. They don't start with Rusty and Danny meeting and then them being friends and then him going to, like, you don't get any of that. You just see him come out of prison and we go from there. We figure out what, what. Our character wants or what they're doing or how they're living their lives and immediately as soon as Danny Ocean gets out of prison for five years I think um, he's right back in his old ways he's right back to planning the next scheme the next heist the next thing and the first thing he does is he goes to Rusty and then that's where you go like okay so they're old friends they know each other they're cool they uh, Danny has an idea. Rusty can help him out with it. He's he can like balance it out. They have a whole team. Blah 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 blah. And it just feels like everything kind of flows effortlessly. You know, it doesn't feel like I have to be like, who's that or what's this? Is like, oh, they're already old. Like they don't. I don't have to know that they have a a past history before prison. Him going to jail. Or that such and such. Like, for some people, they feel like um, they get thrown into the middle of the store and they're like, what's going on? How did I, you know, what's going on? I don't understand or I don't, I'm, I don't connect to them as much or I don't feel as much about it. But this movie kind of throws you into the middle of it. They don't show you like Rusty or Danny doing a first heist or learning how to con or learning how to to gamble and meeting all of it, their old friends and meeting Ruben and so on and so forth. Like they don't, they don't show any of that and they don't have to, they just have to 
make it quick, make it easy, you know? This is what we're doing. I have a job. I have an idea. Let's do it together. And we need a team if we're going to make it happen. And then they make it happen. You know, they're knowledgeable. They don't they don't show them gaining the knowledge. They just have it. And then it's just about how do they do it? Can they execute it? Will they get caught? Will they not get caught? Uh, what, you know, what kind of things are preventing them from achieving their goals? And all of that. I just I just feel like this movie does such a good job of like introducing characters and I never felt like I was behind. You know what I mean? Like, oh they're old friends, that's the end of it. I don't feel like but I want to know more about their history. I wanna know more about their backstory. I wanna know how they got into this or how they met and how do they know about everybody else? Like I don't None of that matters. All that matters is the here and now and kind of figuring out the, the rest of the story. So anyways, they have a job. So they have to assemble a crew. And um, let's, start, let's start with the plan. So they have to get... Well, there's Danny, Rusty. Um, they get like those two brothers. They get Ruben some uh the old guy man i forget his name saul they get saul so that makes six so far don Cheadle, bernie mac um oh the the gymnast yeah that guy um that makes nine. Oh my goodness i'm missing one who am i missing darn it i'm missing somebody i'm missing somebody i'm missing somebody who else is there who else is there i know there's matt damon and then there's one more. Think. Think about it. Oh my goodness. I, I'm blanking on the last one. Darn it. I have 10. There's 11 of them. Okay, whatever. All you need to know is that there's 11 of them. How did I forget the last one? Oh my goodness. This is going to it's gonna haunt me until I get it right. No, I can't do it. Oh, oh, and the, and the tech guy, man, ooh, the tech guy, man, almost forgot him, sorry about that, the tech guy, the guy who does all of the, the electronic stuff that gets them access to the cameras and all that other stuff, like, very important to the team, okay, so what do they want, so they want to rob the Bellagio, MGM Grand, and some other casino, there, there's three of them, and they all put their money into a pile, into the MGM Grand, especially for nights like Fight Night, to make it secure and locked down. And because they do that, they have to figure out a way to get into the vault, and they have all this extra safety precaution, and it's just the security aspect is very difficult to get access to that money. So who do they need? And I just listed all of them. They need... Uh, and they need the tech guy, obviously, to get them access to the to the cameras, to their feed. They need a couple of actors to distract Terry Benedict, to distract... So that's Matt Damon's character, that's Bernie Mac's character, that's, um... What's it called? I, I guess Danny, so, so, so kind of, I mean, he doesn't always perform but it's like he has to like kind of act a little bit the two the two brothers are those two guys with that uh do the van and stuff um yeah they they need these people to like kind of con it and then they obviously need the gymnast who to go inside of the little thing so that way he can pop out and then go out and do his thing to flip and then put the the bombs in place and whatnot so anyways that's why they're all needed. They, they, they need them to execute this plan. And how do they do it? Well, they have to... They have to start by planting a seed for fight night, making it essential. So they have Saul pretend to be some actor, some big guy, I, I, I don't know, some mob boss or whatever a legal organization and he has to like make something essential to get him down to the vault 
Then once they have something essential to get them down into the vault, you know, everything everything kind of rolls out. I'm just kind of explaining the plot here. But they have to get down to the vault, and by getting down to the vault, they can sneak the guy in there. And then once they sneak the guy in there, they have to kind of find find a way to shut off the power, or turn off uh, the MGM Grand security so that they can get down to the vault, oh, blow it up, steal the money, and get out of there. That's That's essentially how they do it. Long story short. But not everything is so simple. Not everything is as easy as it seems. It's not as cut and dry as we would expect it to be. So then, the actual heist? Things are rolling smoothly. Things are, things, things are happening. I mean, the way that they kind of like make it seem or the make it happen is like there's no time to waste there's nothing left to chance and why should there you know they're stealing a lot of money 100 million dollars they're stealing give or take so it starts off smooth it starts off with everybody kind of like doing okay everybody's doing well everybody's everybody's on point you know what i'm saying and then it starts getting a little rough it starts getting a little rough around the edges saul gets caught he gets i mean Somebody no recognizes him and notices him, and he has to kind of like, I have no idea who you are, or get away from me. He's because the guy's gonna ruin everything. Man, that I think about that guy when I watch the movie. I'm like, oh, what a poor guy. He was just being a good friend. He was like, yo, Saul Goodman, or not Saul Goodman. What am I talking about? He's just like Saul. It's me, Benny from Saratoga. You remember? And he has to be like. He has to stay in character, dude. He can't waste it. Terry Benedict almost catches him. Almost catches him, but he's like, I have no idea who this is. Back away from me. Man, that's crazy. So that happens, right? And then obvi- uh, the, the gymnast, he ha- they put the, the case over his like bin. So that way, when he opens it up, it's like it falls out, and there's obvious, and there's legit no way for him to catch the suitcase before it falls off. But they make it so he does. He also broke his hand or like got it all messed up, and he had to like wrap it before he did the heist, so that way he can still move. And during the heist, he got stuck in there. Um, uh, Tess cost um, Tess caught. Rusty calling Terry and so she kind of knows that they're doing a job um, and even before the heist started Danny got booted out by Rusty but it was like kind of like a, a fake play to try to get everybody more focused I guess or to try to get everybody more on edge or capable of doing what they have to do and what else goes wrong trying to think trying to think Hmm. I think that was a little bit as far as it goes during the heist when it comes to mess ups, but it's all good. Oh, Danny forgot batteries for the thing. So that that could have messed up everything. Anyways, they were so close to getting, you know, a little caught, but they managed to get away with it in the end and i like that you know they're they're close to disaster but then everything just goes their way everything kind of just happens you know i think you know what it is it's that it's that rush and that feeling of like you you can't you can't predict everything right you can't predict Saul's going to get recognized you can't predict, um, you know, necessarily. I mean, I guess they kind of did predict predict Tess figuring out that they were robbing the place, but you don't really know anything else, right? Uh, you can't you can't predict him getting his cloth stuck to the MGM the vault. You can't you can't think about that. Hmm. 
yeah, I just I just feel like there were any number of things that could have could have gone wrong. But they were close to the disaster, but they made it through. They pulled through. They got away with it, and it is what it is. And then, you know, the aftermath of it all. What what do they what do they all really gain? They all gained some money. They gained some notoriety. They robbed. They robbed the MGM. You know, that's that's a big deal. Um, you know, there's a sort of camaraderie. There's a friendship, I guess. You know, some sort of like a professional relationship with one another. Um, I think for Danny, da- Danny definitely won. He definitely won the biggest prize. And that was his dear... That was Julia Roberts, bro. He won Julia Roberts in the end. Five years in prison. And then in the end, he got Julia Roberts back. But then he had to go back to prison because he was in parole violation. So I don't remember how long he goes away, like six months maybe. So she waited six months later. He comes out. They get back together. You know what I'm saying? Like all all is well again. All is sweet. And he gets his money. And Rusty goes to pick him up. Like Rusty wasn't there to pick him up initially. But now, because they did this job, you know what I'm saying? Like, there's a friendship. They, they, I mean, they have been friends, but there was more of a friendship. Because before they weren't pulling off big jobs, before they were just doing whatever they could to get by or doing it legit, sort, sort of, right? They were kind of conning, kind of not, but it is what it is. I just feel like it's kind of, it sucks that Danny went back to prison. Like, it would have been amazing if he had, like, you know what I mean? Spent the night with Tess, you know what I'm saying? Like, to really, to just to really drive home that he won, you know what I'm saying? But he goes to prison. Um, and everybody kind of, they have that beautiful mountain, uh, and, ugh, they have that beautiful moment at the fountain of all of them just taking in their success. And there's not even like a thought of the police catching them or seeing them or somebody like being upset about catching them or whatnot. It's funny. Well, I guess because they intercepted the 911 call. So they they really have nothing to worry about. They don't have to worry about the cops. But in that moment, you just kind of feel all of them like satisfied and happy that they got away with what they got away with. And it's because, well, they each get a big, they each get like a $10 million piece of pie. You know, they each get their own piece of the, piece of the whole thing. They each get like a, an enjoyment out of doing it or completing it. There's a, there's a high sense of accomplishment after all of it. You know what I mean? And I think the most important thing was that the the gymnast survived. Like, he did it. Like, he executed. He did what he was supposed to do. You know what I'm saying? Like, if he didn't do what he was supposed to do, there's no way any of this stuff works. Right. And also, if Danny's not there, if Matt Damon, you know, everybody needs each other. And then for all of them to like be gathered around that that fountain with the water and that night and be just like, we did it. We did it. It's possible. You know, we're each or all of us millionaires and we're all going to go out there and be live amazing lives and be awesome. You know, so it's really cool, and it you know what it is it just makes you it makes you root for them, it makes me want to be a part of the crew, like oh, I would definitely be an actor like i would I would happily con if it meant that I could get like ten million dollars, you know what I mean, but sadly, I'm not a criminal. I do not have any desire to rob casinos. But if I were, you know, I would definitely want a crew like that. And it's not over. 
You know, this this is a big deal because it's not over. They're going to spend the rest of their lives getting chased by Terry Benedict and everything is going to be, you know, everything else that happens, you know, we'll talk about next time. And that'll be, that'll be Oceans 12 and 13. So, yeah. But I, I do really like this one. I think Oceans 11 is like a perfect, perfect starting point. Um, and then they try to do like an Oceans 8 with all the, the female, the all female cast. Um, yeah, I haven't really, I haven't watched it. I've seen some like bits here and there, like clips of like Sandra Bullock being really smart. But other than that, I, I don't really know too much about it, but this movie right here. A definite classic. A definite heist classic. So, anyways, go watch it if you haven't seen it yet. It, well, you probably shouldn't be listening to this because I kind of spoiled all of it. But if you haven't watched it in a while, you know, definitely worth a rewatch. So, thank you guys so much for listening. I'll talk to you guys all next time. Thank you.